one of the first things that you notice about somebody that you just meet, first you notice if the person looks different from you. Um, and the second thing you notice is if they sound different from you. And there's so many everyday conversations by non-linguists about linguistic phenomenon. Um, you know, people say, oh, I say pop and you say soda. I say hoagie, you say sub, those kinds of things. So that's why I went into linguistics to begin with. Linguistics is the science of language, um, and what we're really interested in is looking at um, several aspects of language. It can be broken up into a number of different fields. There are people who look specifically at grammatical systems, um, linguists who look at phonological or sound systems. Um, the kind of linguistics I do, I'm a sociolinguist, and I do, I, I do a couple different things, but I'm most interested in the ways in which people use language, the social aspects of language. So I look at um, intersections between language use and dialect, um, if it's regional dialect or social dialect, language and um, race, language and class, language and gender. Um, I look at uh, language acquisition with children, um, so those kinds of things. And obviously, in looking at social varieties of language, we also need to look at grammatical systems and phonological systems, um, things like that. But I'm really interested in, in the social parameters of language use. I love teaching linguistics. It's, I, couldn't have, I couldn't have found a better career for myself um, because I find that my students are, are always surprised um, and um, always learning something that, that is completely unique um, but also is applicable in their other classes. So I, I like that. Um, and the work that I'm doing right now, I have a, a, I'm finishing up a, a project that's funded by the National Science Foundation. And it is a dialect project. So even, even though that's, I haven't done dialectology for a long time, um, I'm back into it now. So I've come full circle. Um, and it's a dialect project where I am looking at the, the region that we're in right now, the lower Susquehanna Valley. Um, and I find that project to be very, very interesting. Um, first of all, I, I like the part where you can go out and interview native speakers of the dialect, um, who, who people, most of the time people like to talk about the way they talk. Um, so I like that part of it, and um, I like what I'm finding because the reason I was doing this project is um, because I was having dinner with one of my friends here at Gettysburg one night, a black woman who was born and raised in Adams County, and she said to me, it had snowed, and she said to me, girl, my driveway needs plowed. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, isn't that interesting? Because here we have two competing dialects, if you will. First of all, African American English, the girl part, and some of the phonological features, the sound features of the, her, her sentence there. But then, my driveway needs plowed is a construction that we find, which is a regional kind of construction. Um, we find it actually along the Appalachian Mountains. It's a Scots-Irish construction. Um, and I went to school in Western Pennsylvania with lots of blacks who grew up in that dialect area, and I never in my life have heard a black person utter that sentence. So I thought to myself, well, that certainly is interesting to see the ways in which African American English has accommodated regional varieties where blacks have migrated in the country. So I thought I would look at what kinds of data we have already for this region and it turns out that all the data that's ever been collected, with the exception of maybe two people, has been from rural whites in this area. Um, and nothing's really been done in the past 20 years anyway. So I thought that it was important for me to do a project where I collected data from urban speakers and also from African American speakers in this area. First of all, just to get a clearer picture of what the Lower Susquehanna Valley dialect looks like. We all have access to this mass com communication now, 
But racialisms still are very, very important in constructing identity for people. And um, there aren't too many people from different regions who want to sound mainstream or general, if you will. Um, there have been a couple areas of the country where they've had dialect reduction classes, or they've tried to, and in, in the public school systems. And they haven't enrolled, and they've had to cancel the classes um, because people don't see that as something um, that needs to be changed. There's a, a great deal of linguistic pride, I think, still in regional accents. Um, there are some dialects that are much maligned, and I think that there are some people who speak those dialects who really do make an effort to um, sound more professional or sound more mainstream. Um, and certainly in the case of African American English, um, linguists and educators have been saying for a long time that while African American English is a rule governed and systematic variety that is logically capable of, of communicating just like any other variety, um, in order to be successful in the professional world, African American English speakers need to be able to switch, need to be able to speak general American English. The two parts of my work, um, the first part, the collecting of the data, that um, is done, I, I do use um, not really a tape recorder, since we're so sophisticated now, we have things with no, with no moving parts so we don't have to hear all of, all of the noise. Um, but, but we do tape those um, interviews with, with participants and then um, do lots of things with the digital files, measuring vowels. That's one thing that we're, my student and I are doing right now. Actually, she's doing most of the work Unfortunately, she's, she's, um, she's cutting vowels because we want to look at the, what, what most people will call the long O. It's a phonological, it's a sound feature of this variety. Um, and linguists call it a fronted O. So maybe in your variety, you would say something like oak. But here, um, someone would say oak. Um, you would say home. And someone here would say home. Um, so it means the O is, is pushed more forward in the vowel space, we would call it. Um, so, so she's going through and she's cutting out all of those long O's for our almost 300 interviews, an hour each. So I'm hoping she's be my assistant forever. <laughs> so she's doing that. Um, but once we have the data, then I usually, I find that I work best at home when my children aren't there. Um, Usually Fridays is my Fridays are my research day, so I'll stay home and try to look at data or try to finish articles, um, things like that. Um, I also work best in chunks, so um, my husband sometimes will take the kids to visit his parents for a long weekend, and that the purpose of that would be for me to stay home and just write. I love to teach. Um, I love that my students are interested in what I do. Um, but then the other thing that's really satisfying for with the project I'm doing right now is um, bringing something new to my field. There aren't, we just don't get a lot of data from small black communities that are really pockets in, um, in very rural areas. And so it's very satisfying to be able to talk about the ways in which isolated rural African Americans are um, negotiating this space of being a Gettysburgian and also being black and um, the ways in which those kinds of identities are negotiated and the way it shows up in the language. Um, so that's very satisfying as well. Um, part of my mission when I went to graduate school um, I was completely funded um, because I'm African American and there are very few of us in linguistics. So I was completely funded and I was mentored very well in my field and I was very well supported by other African American linguistics colleagues. Um, so the other thing I find very satisfying is being able to include undergraduate African American students in my research and, um, and also teaching courses on African American English both to African-American English speaking students who've been told all their lives that what they're talking, what they're saying is wrong. Um, and being able to show them, no, look, you know, we have, we have a deep social history of this variety and it's rich and it's important. And it's important to us as American blacks. 
um, but also being able to show non-African American English speaking students the same thing. Um, that, you know, it's not a hodgepodge of slang. It's not people who can't talk right. Um, it's not people who are ignorant and uneducated. That in many times, this is a choice to speak this way. Um, and there are some very, very important reasons for doing so. And so I find that very satisfying as well. Um, just being able to, to have a class like, like that here at this college. Mm -hmm.